Hi everyone. I am participating in a little prompt challenge that is hosted by Janet Young on her YouTube channel. It's called Scavenger Hunt 2024. And while I'm not posting a lot about that on my YouTube channel, I am sharing what I'm creating in my journal over on my Instagram page. So if you guys would like to participate and or follow along, I will put the link to Janet's introductory video where she describes a little bit about it and she provides a list of prompts. And so that link will be in this video's description. And if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing in my journal and how I'm using the prompts, come over and follow me on my Instagram page and you'll be able to see all that. The reason I'm here today is I posted a picture of this little journal that I put together and I had a couple of people ask me if I would please show how I created it. So I'm going to do that now. And um, what I used is a regular book cover, hardback book cover, and I took the pages out of the book and covered the cover. And then I poked holes or punched holes with a uh, crocodile on the top and on the bottom and ran some elastic through there. Uh, covered it with, this is tissue paper, inside is covered with scrapbook paper. And then these little elastics that are uh, showing on the inside is where I will take my little signatures of folded pages and just slide them in underneath like that. And I can put in or take out as many pages as I want. And I really like that idea. It's sometimes very helpful when you're creating on your pages to be able to take them out while you're creating on them. So I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what it is I'm gonna, I'm gonna be showing. And I'm gonna use pretty much the same elements that I used here. And uh, I think the inside covers are gonna be a little bit different, but this tissue paper and, and all is gonna be the same. This is fabric and this is tissue paper. So let me show you how I got started. As you can see, the book that I'm using is an old book that I have already torn lots of pages out of to use in my art, so I'm not concerned about taking this book apart because I'm going to continue to use these pages just like I had been using. And now I get to use the cover. So I started by just taking a craft knife and carefully cutting down next to where the pages are attached to the cover. And I was real careful with the knife not to cut into the actual spine of the cover. So I cut the front and then I cut the back and just removed the block of pages out in one piece. So then I was just left with the cover. And I needed to coat it in gesso so that I could take a lot of that color away from the covers. Because I'm going to be using tissue paper to cover it with. And as you can see here, if I were to have glued the tissue paper directly to the cover without putting any gesso on it, I would never have been able to see my tissue paper. It just tissue paper is just so thin that it shows everything through it. So I needed to cover up and mute all of that color. I did two or three coats of gesso on the cover and you'll just need to, depending on your book cover, you'll just need to put as many coats as it takes. You just want to get rid of all the pattern and leave yourself a mostly white cover. So once I did those several coats on the outside, I and it dried, and you want to let each coat dry between. Once that was all dried, I flipped it over and did the same thing around the edges of the book. So now we're left with the white cover, and you'll see that I didn't coat a lot of the... I started coating it with the gesso, but I did not continue with that because I knew I was going to be putting a dark fabric over it so this is not going to show through. If the fabric you're using is 
light colored you will need to put several coats on and mute all of this if you want your fabric to show without the other stuff showing through so um, now we're left with the gesso part complete and what I did before is you can see how these papers stick out just a little bit here on either side and what I did was just take my scissors and just trim some of that away it's it's really not necessary and it I didn't want it to get in my way it may be fine to leave it there but just in case I just decided to go ahead and trim some of it off I'm not cutting it completely down flush with the spine just to make sure everything stays together properly but getting some of that bulk out of the way I thought was a good idea all right now what I did was and you'll I'm not giving measurements on this because all of the measurements for this book are for this book and so depending on what kind of book you're using or what size it is you'll have to do a little bit of measuring yourself to make sure of what you need so what I did was I took my ruler I measured this little spine area here and then I cut a piece of chipboard and I'm going to use that just to reinforce the spine to make it nice and sturdy and I'm going to glue that in place now I did take two thin pieces of chipboard and I cut them exactly the same size and glued them together just to make it nice and sturdy. All right, so I'm gonna just glue that down. Then I'm just gonna lay that in inside the spine area. I wanna make sure it's in the center. There's gonna be a little bit of space on each side and center it top and bottom. So I'm going to just coat this and I'm going to do it, um, you know, in two or three coats, just like I did the outside. So here's a little trick that I use when I'm in between coats of gesso or paint or things like that that I know I'm going to be coming right back to once one coat is dry is I just put it inside a Ziploc bag and then zip it up and that way I don't have to wash the brush out repeatedly over and over and over because this is still very wet and soft so makes uh, makes the job a lot easier <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and put another coat or maybe two on and get that finished up and once it's all dry, I'll be back to put the tissue paper on the cover. When you're creating your book, go ahead and glue in the chipboard and the spine, and then you can do the whole, uh, the side, the inside cover. You can do the whole thing at one time. For some reason, I was not thinking very clearly, so don't do what I did, but add your reinforcement to your spine and then go ahead and do all of your gessoing and it'll save yourself some time <laughs> all right so now all of my gesso has dried and i'm gonna put the tissue paper on when you get ready to do this part you just want to make sure that you have a piece of tissue paper that is uh, about an inch bigger than your book cover because what we're going to do is fold this over and glue it in and um, we want to make sure that there's enough to do that and while you have your tissue paper out make sure you keep out a little scrap strip because you're going to want to cover the spine area also so once we get the big piece on then I will glue this piece in place so I'm going to use a glue stick it kind of makes it a little bit simpler that way, for me anyway. So I'm gonna move this over for a second. What I'm gonna do is just put some of the glue stick 
on the front cover. So we'll start at the front. And we want to give it a generous amount because you do want it to stick down. You don't want a bunch of air bubbles underneath there. So give yourself plenty of the glue stick here. You can turn your, you know, lean over and look at it from the side and let it catch the light and you'll be able to see the areas that are missing it. I think we're pretty good there. And then lift up your book and just make sure you get some in that crease that runs right along the spine there. Make sure you get glue in there. You want your tissue paper to stick in there real good. And I'm just kind of going on over around the corner, basically. <laughs> I'm not doing the whole spine yet, just kind of that edge around the corner. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just lay my, lay my book upside down in there. I mean, you know, face down. And I'm gonna center it on that piece of paper, making sure I have enough around all of the edges. Just double check that once more before you stick it down. At this point, go ahead and close your book because you wanna, you wanna make sure that you're getting pressure down in that groove right there. And then you can flatten it out just like that. Okay. But it does need to go down into that little <clears throat> to that little groove right there. And then of course I had put a little bit of glue right here, so I'm just pressing that in right there too. And remember, we can see through this tissue paper right here. I can see the marks on the spine, but I'm going to be covering the spine later with a piece of fabric. So that part won't matter. Now if you want to, you can take a brayer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do too much heavy duty scraping on here with a scraper because this will tear pretty easily because it's wet now with the glue that's underneath. But if you want to roll a brayer or if you have something that you can apply some gentle pressure with, this is uh, helpful to, uh, to get everything kind of laying down properly. There. All right. Probably can move this out of the way right now. Okay, now we'll go ahead and flip the paper back and I'm gonna go ahead and finish. I kind of peel the paper back just a little bit to make sure I have glue all the way up in there. And, um, and then we'll just cover the spine and the next little groove right here. Just kind of work it in stages. Okay, and it's best if you pick your book up so that you can actually get down in there with the glue stick or whatever glue you're using. Okay. All right. And then again, pick up your book and go ahead and let it kind of close gently. and then press it down in the groove. And see how that sticks right down in there. Okay. And you wanna do all that with your book in a closed position because if you wait and you left it laying all out flat like this, then when you went to close it later after it's dry, oftentimes it'll just crack and tear from the pressure. So I always try to do that when my book is in a closed position just so I can avoid that that tearing issue. <laughs> So we want to take some scissors and we want to cut the um, corners 
here, not too close, pretty close, but not all the way to the corner of the book. You can see how I'm a little bit, a little bit off from the corner. So do that. And that way we can remove some of that bulk because it will get too thick and bulky if you try to glue all that up in there. So we're going to be gluing this in the center first and then pressing it on out. So we want glue across the entire length right here where you're going to be gluing. Just go all the way across and you can catch the edge of your cover at this time and that way your tissue paper will stick there. Remember to get the inside of those little grooves on this side also. Okay. I've got a little groove on mine right here on the base. You might not always have that, but wherever you need to press the paper in, press it in. wrinkles will happen don't worry about them don't let it bother you because it's wet paper and wet paper stretches so that's why you get excess paper and wrinkles when you're gluing okay press the ends here too make sure that sticks down real good all right so then all that's left is to well first of all i'm going to put a little bit of glue on the corners because there's a little bit of that little tiny bit of excess paper right here so you want to put a little bit of glue on each corner and then you just kind of push that in before you round this over you just kind of push that into the into the corner same thing on this side, just push it in. Okay, then we'll get some glue going down the side. A little bit on the edge. And fold it over. I will say that this tissue paper that I'm using is a little bit heavier, just a tad heavier than typical tissue paper is. And so it kind of holds up well for this kind of um, covering job. So if you have a thinner tissue paper, just be careful. And remember that it's going to be wet and it will tear if you pull on it too hard. So you'll have to be really careful with it. But you don't have to use tissue paper either. You can use any kind of paper. You can use a painted paper you made. You can use gift wrap. Um, you can use scrapbook paper. You know, whatever you want to use, you can use. I just wanted to show everyone what I had done and how I did it. And that's why I'm using tissue paper again. So if you're using um, a book that has a lot of pattern on it, like mine did on the outside, and you're using a darker paper or you're using a dark fabric or something like that on the outside, you won't even have to do the gessoing stuff. You just, you don't have to. 
Um, the only reason I did that was because I'm using tissue paper that is um, light colored and I would have been able to see through, see that pattern through and I wanted to see this pattern, <laughs> this one, <laughs> not the one that was on the book. Otherwise I would have just left the book uncovered. So that's the reasoning. So, you know, do whatever works for you. Use whatever you have. You don't have to go out and get anything special. Use whatever glues you have or uh, adhesives you have. And, um, and just have fun. Just see what you can create. Because if you've never done this before, it really is rewarding. It's quite a lot of fun. I did all that and I didn't put glue down. <laughs> too busy, too busy talking. <laughs> There we go. All right. Now it's sticking. All right. The next step is to put the little piece that I mentioned that goes in the center on the spine area. And it doesn't have to be, you can see how crooked mine is. It's crooked. It's, um, it's uneven. It doesn't matter because this is just going to be going down right here. And then all of this is going to be covered up anyway with the whatever papers you decide to use for your inside covers. So this edge will not matter. I do want to make sure that it's wide enough though to, um, like I'll probably just, I'm not going to overlap it really. I think I'm going to just kind of start right here and go to right here. I do want to make sure that I have a piece that's wide enough to go over because it's going to be kind of tucked down in the grooves again. I want to make sure that I have enough to go over here so that when I put my papers on that edge is covered. I'll show you what my papers look like here because I'm going to test one out. So this time I have this paper that I'm going to use inside. So if I lay it down I think it's going to be, yeah, it's perfectly fine. See it's going to cover that edge nicely. You'll never see that raw edge of that tissue paper right there. So it's going to be fine. Yay. All right. So I'm going to cut this now um, right about here. If it overlaps a little, I'm not concerned about it. I think it'll be fine. Gently get it into those grooves before you stick it down fully anywhere. You just want to make sure you've got enough of it down in there. Don't use anything sharp in the grooves here because it will tear that wet paper. And then press the center down and the edges down. Just barely had enough to go over these edges. All right, so let me lay my paper there again and make sure that we're all covered. This is the pretty short side and there's a little bit of short side here, but yeah, it's actually gonna be fine. Yep. And this one is too. Okay, yeah, I love it. So I usually just stand my book up like this so that the air can circulate all the way around and it will dry quicker. So that's why I'm standing it up. And then after, after a little bit, I'll turn it over because this edge is getting nice and dry. And after a while, I'll turn it over like this so that this edge can get dry. I am going to seal my tissue paper with some Mod Podge mat.
once that's dry, I'm going to glue my inside cover pieces on. All right, so I have one side glued on, and this is the second one. You can just get it placed quickly and press it in. Very cute. All right, so the next step will be the fabric on the outside of the spine. What I did was I, I took my fabric that I'm going to be putting on the, uh, on the spine and I cut it to the size that I needed for the height of my journal plus a little bit extra. So you want to cut it so that you can leave just enough to fold in to make a clean edge on the bottom. So that's what I've done and I press that in place. So then now all I need to do is glue this onto the spine like this. The first thing I'm going to do before I attach it is I'm going to put a little tiny bit of the uh, Fabri-Tac glue under here just to keep that down. So I want to try to get this as straight as possible. I'm going to come down and cover all the way on mine. I'm going to cover all the way to where you can see that little ridge. That's where the original spine cover was. So I made mine about the same width as, I mean to cover about the same width as they did. Okay. So since I have a nice line there, that's helpful. When I don't have a line there that I can see, I will actually pencil in a line so that I can follow it and, and lay that on there straight.
All right, so now let's punch some holes in the spine and um, set some eyelets here so that we can run the elastic in and we're completely finished. Okay, so what I did was I cut a little piece of cardstock to roughly the size of that stabilizer piece that I made. It's about the same width as that, just wide enough to fit down in there comfortably. And I marked three holes in the center of this piece. I'm folding it in half. And I'm going to punch my holes in this piece so that I can mark my book where I want my holes punched. And I wanted to mention too, I'm using a crocodile because that's the easiest thing to go through this many layers. But um, if you're using a crocodile, there's a little gadget right here next to where the hole is. I'm going to use the small one. This comes with a smaller hole and a larger hole. And I'm going to use the smaller. And there's a gadget right here that will set the depth of how far in you're going to punch your holes. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to go in here and then that stops wherever that little black marker is. It's going to stop there. And that way you can guarantee that all three of your holes are going to be exactly the same um, in exactly the same place across. I'm not sure exactly how to word that, but okay, where it's set now is a little too far. I don't want it to go in quite that far. So I'm going to move this little I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I'm moving it up one little notch to see if I like that. That's pretty good. I want to go one more and just see if it's going to work. Yeah, I think I want to I want to put it there. You want to put your holes as close to the end as you comfortably can because that's going to determine where your elastics go, which also determines how big your papers can be that you put inside. Like for instance, if I were to punch holes way up here and way down here, my papers could only be this wide to go in my book. Okay, so you wanna put them down on the spine as far as comfortably possible. So that's where I'm gonna punch the hole in this at that comfortable mark that I just set it on. So I've got my markings there and I can see them even though they're not I'm not punching in exactly the same place. I can see those marks. Okay, so I'm going to punch one there. There. And one there. So you can see how even they are parallel all the way across. So that's the way you'll be able to punch in your book. All right. So I'm just, just to keep straight what I'm doing here, I'm just marking this at the, as the bottom and this as the top, just so if I lay my paper down, I know exactly what's going on. And that just keeps all those holes exactly the same. This one will always line up to this one. And the same with the middle and the outside. Okay, so to get it in the center of my of the spine here. In fact, I think to make it easier and to keep it still, I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on it. This will come up, so I'm not I'm not concerned about it, but I want to I want it to kind of stay put. I don't want it to wiggle around. So see, I did that and now I can come back knowing that this is the top and this is the bottom because I marked it. Okay. So now I can set it in the middle and get it right where I want it. There. And I'm, then it won't move on me and everything should be good. Okay, I'm going to get a marker that I can use that I can see when I get ready to punch my holes. So I'm going to put one there, one there, and one there. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. But I'm going to turn it around so that I can make sure that I'm getting, getting everything 
in pretty much the same spot that I had it down there. It's probably best if you if you make it the same length as your spine and that way when you stick it down you won't have to move it and everything should stay straight that way. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I mean, if this isn't exactly right, it's only going to be a tiny bit off, if any. So, okay. Look how beautifully that punches right through fabric. Just very nice. All right, so now I need to get my get my little eyelets. I'm going to use the white ones. I picked white because the thread, I'm um, sorry, the elastic is white. And um, that just looks nice to me on the end. All right, so this is all set and ready to go here. And you don't have to use eyelets, but it does keep your um, fabric from fraying. It just makes a nice clean edge there and it just protects that fabric. And it makes it easy for you to thread your elastic through there. Okay, I switched over to using my bigger crocodile because I, I felt like it was setting the eyelets a little bit better. I, my hands don't work quite as well as they used to, so it's harder for me to squeeze and get the right pressure there. So I'm using this one because it has a whole lot more leverage. And it just it just sets them much better because I don't want them to come out, you know. So if you don't have one of these and you want to invest in one, I would recommend the larger model. It just uh, has a little bit more power and it has a nice long reach. So it will reach into the center of a book if you need to punch holes in the center. It will reach all the way through to punch, you know. So um, if you're going to spend the money, spend just a little bit more and get the bigger one. That's just my recommendation. Let's put this stuff away so we can do the elastic. All right, so I've got this elastic. I use this two millimeter elastic. Okay, and I'm just gonna pull some off the roll here because we're gonna use a little length. And I don't measure a length. I just use it right off the roll. So, um, I'm going to go from the inside to the outside in the center hole. Okay, I'm going to go into the left hole, all the way down to the bottom. Pull it through. Then I'm going to go up through the middle hole. I learned this from Shannon Green. She I bought a, I bought a um, journal from her, and it had instructions on how to restring your your journal. So I kept it, and that helped helped me with this book. <laughs> so thanks, Shannon. All right, let me see if I can get this in here. This is a little bit challenging because it's um, going in the same hole with the thick elastic already. So I've got one of these little dental floss threaders, right? And it's nothing more than a giant needle, if you look at it that way. So here's the eye of the needle, and here's the point of the needle. 
So these are very handy to have in your stash for stuff like this when you can't thread something through that's a big on a bigger scale than a needle and thread would do. So I'm just going to put that into the hole. I'm going to thread the needle and I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to slide this thread down to the very end so just the end of it's going to pop through when I pull on the floss threader. See that? So then I can pull it on through. Let's see. Just trying to gauge how much of my elastic I'm going to need here. We don't need, I don't think we need as much as I have here. Let's see. Well, okay. Okay, so now I have it through that top hole. And I'm going to put it through the one on the far right. I need to snip this off though because it's gotten pretty warm. Okay, right there through the hole on the right down through the hole at the bottom and then I'm going to go back up through the middle in the same way that I had to go through the middle over there there we go make sure I have enough to tie once I get over there okay so we're still attached to the to the spool by the way all right we're going in through this hole right here. So I'm gonna put my giant needle through there. <laughs> and all it is is a dental floss threader. And so if you buy a pack of those, you'll have enough to last you forever. Okay, I'm sliding it down to the end and then I'm pulling it through. All right. So, I'm going to give your give your elastics a little bit of a tug. You want to have a little bit of a snugness there, but not not too loose and not too tight. Just just a little bit of snug, snug it up there. And then you're going to tie it. And you do a square knot, which is very simple. So make sure you have a thread on the right and a thread on the left, or a piece of elastic. Okay, right over left. That means the right thread going over the left thread. Okay, start tying. Okay, and then you pick up that thread, and it it's the left side now going over the right side. So you make sure it goes over the top of that thread, just like this and pull that through. I've got my hand down here because I was holding on to that elastic down here where I made the first tie. There we go. And that's a square knot. That's so fun. It's just amazing to me how we can take a a little bit of tissue paper and a little bit of fabric and a little piece of elastic and, and make a book make a book cover it's just so cool so then all you do is you find the papers that you want to put in your journal and you fold them in half and you slide them underneath I'm trying to find one uh, the beginning of this little signature here there we go so they're just all folded in half and you just slide them underneath the elastic. And you do that for each signature. I did put the two together here that are in the middle. You can you could use those separately if you wanted to. Like if you find that you want to add more papers, you can you can use the two separately. I just put them together for now until I see how many pages I'm going to put in this journal. But that's how you do it, guys. It's just so much fun, and I can take out a page when I want to work on it. 
I can just slide this page right out here and I can work on it to my heart's content. When I'm done, I can slide it right back in underneath that elastic and it just makes creating a lot simpler when you don't have a big book that you're trying to work around and thick pages and trying to keep pages out of your way and all that. So anyway, it's that's the fun of it. That's that's the enjoyment um, of this no sew journal. You don't have to sew your pages in and you get the benefit of being able to have the pages to uh, take out. So that's our little journal and I hope that you guys will make one and enjoy it as much as I just did. So if you guys decide to make one of these and you'd like to share it, I'd love to see it. I'm sure other people would love to see it. Post it over in my other group on Facebook called Random Remains Revived. Don't post it in the Mixed Media Morsels group because that one is just for those projects. But this is this other group I have, Random Remains Revived, is where we use scraps and we make fun things out of scraps. And to me, this is that type of project. We're upcycling an old book. We're using little bits and pieces that we have lying around. So feel free to um, put in a join re request over there and we'll get you in as soon as possible. And then you can post any of your projects that you make using scraps and upcycling. So, all right guys, take care. We will see you again soon in the next video. Bye-bye.